am man. I read man magazine to learn to be better man. The video. Hey guys, welcome back. I bought a bunch of used men's magazines from the early 2000s. That was the peak time period for saucy, edgy, raunchy <laughs> dude magazines such as Maxim, Lad Mags. They're magazines for guys. They a lot of times feature hot female celebrities on the cover. We're gonna dive into all these issues I bought and I'm gonna learn how to be a man. Finally, I am taking the advice of men's magazines from over 20 years ago and applying it to every area of my life. If it says stop being gay, up. No need for conversion therapy. I'm following everything I learned. <laughs> Can't wait. Maxim was definitely the main girl in this lad mag universe. But before we get into that, let's look at its classier cousin, Esquire magazine. Is there anything on this cover that will get me demonetized? I don't think. She's clothed. This is from April 2002, featuring Cameron Diaz. The slogan for Esquire is man at his best. And we're gonna learn all about women. 75 mysteries explained. <laughs> yes. Esquire falls under the lad mag label, I'm pretty sure, but it is isn't really like Maxim. It's more intellectual, sophisticated. They even have men on the cover sometimes. A man among men. You open it up and the first page is just a twink modeling for Prada. Gay. Oh my God, the best part of magazines. You get to smell the cologne. 20 year old cologne. Oh, it's stronger than ever. Oh. Mm. You kind of forget that back when everyone read magazines, it's literally all just ads. But the ads look cool, so it's fine. Hugh Hefner's in an ad, very 2002. He's dead. Um, this magazine is trying to claim that men invented camel toes. The history of really tight clothing. As we know, there are male camel toes and female camel toes. Although there is greater attention placed on the female camel toe, it is the male camel toe that actually emerged first. Sorry, ladies. Do something. Y'all think you started camel toes, you didn't. Sit down, mended. What was the very first camel toe spotted? From a man. <laughs> We did that. Proud to be a man. There's a whole page on why men should be eating bunnies. I'm not kidding. Like it's literally some person writing about how we should start eating bunnies. They're kind of making it seem like it's gonna be the new thing. And like, we'll look back and be like, why did we used to think it was weird to eat bunnies? But it is 22 years later and it hasn't caught on. We're finally to the Cameron Diaz profile. She is the kind of girl who gets you thinking that you know exactly what kind of girl she is. She's a guy's girl. She's a girl who would bait your hook for you. She's a girl who would drive real fast. She's a girl who gets drunk and pees in the shower and smashes pumpkins and tears up traffic tickets. She's the kind of girl who gets a fellow going. Just like that. <laughs> like I want someone to take a photo of me on a bike like that. I want a photo of me bent over by a bike. They're really portraying Cameron as not like the other girls. Like they have a whole entire paragraph about her love of farts. She's not like other women. Like she's not gonna go to the other room to fart. Like she loves ripping them right in front of everyone. You know, she is the kind of girl who is very much at one with gas. She is not shy about it at all. I love talking about it. She told me quite happily. One of the biggest controversial pleasures I know is to indulge yourself in a bit of flatulent humor. She has been known to catch whiffs of silent deadly ones. This is real, like what? Does Cameron Diaz have a fart fetish? Throughout the filming of Charlie's Angels, she and her castmates competed ferociously to produce the most offensive fart sounds. We're known for that, she proudly told me. Like she really is a guy's girl. Okay, I wanna hang with her. Like she's my type. That's my type of woman. So it promised secrets about women. They actually are good. Like it's it, right here, it's debunked a myth that women are bad drivers. Like it says, that's not true. That's just misogynistic. It, it's saying what positions women like in the bedroom. There is an ad for a penis enlargement method. There's been a penis enlargement breakthrough. It's absolutely the easiest and fastest doctor recommended way to add two, three, or even five inches. Oh my gosh, is this still available? Does it stop at adding five inches? Cause I might, I might need a little bit more. There's also a full spread ad for a boob grower kit. So you could, you know, get that for your wife for Christmas. I'm I'm sure that would make for a very happy Christmas morning. I learned a lot. So we're swinging from one side of the Lad Mag universe all the way to the other with FHM, For Him Magazine. I think this was like the number one men's magazine in the UK. Maybe it still is. I bought this one from 2003. It features Beyonce, I was excited. It turns out it's in another language, German. I'm guessing I'm covering a photo right here so I don't wanna get demonetized. Americans don't learn second languages. Just kidding, I'm actually learning 
trying to learn how to speak Spanish. <sighs> FHM wasn't trying to be sophisticated like Esquire. It's actually gone through a lot of controversies. People say it had offensive humor, very misogynistic. So I picked up this issue from 2003 featuring Tara Reid, a huge actress in the early 2000s. The way they advertised this cover is odd. Tara Reid, the teen sex goddess, as you've never seen her before. Like what? I Googled it and she was 28 when this came out. But when you go to the article, it talks about how she's the queen of teen sex comedies. So that's why they wrote that on the cover, but still. I often go commando when I'm wearing jeans, but with a skirt, you don't want to be pantyless. They asked her when she likes to go commando. I'd be like, girl, I'm here to promote my new movie. The interview just always goes back to being suggestive. They ask her like, have you ever had encounters with scary stage mothers? And she's like, oh yeah, like there's a lot of scary stage moms in this entertainment industry. And then they say, you once appeared in Jello ads. What's the sexiest thing you ever done with gelatin? How do you answer that? What's the sexiest thing you've ever done with gelatin? She has the perfect answer. Suck it. They ask her later in the interview, what's the strangest thing you ever put in your mouth? She replies, probably an oyster. That's not so strange. To which she says, well, it, it felt strange. What if you show up to the interview and you're just in a bad mood, like you aren't in a joking mood? And the interviewer is like, how are you enjoying London? Have you ever been here before? Oh, um, it's good, I'm just jet lagged. But yeah, it's pretty, I'm excited to see everything. What's the raunchiest thing you've done since you got here? Well, I just got here. like, And like I said, I'm jet lagged, so I've just been sleeping. What position do you sleep in? Oh, it's like, I just feel like it, I would, like I'm done being the teen sex goddess. Why do they refer to her as that? There's a whole article dedicated to a horse that drinks beer. Sparky guzzles two pints of ale every day. Oh, he can take his beer insists his owner. Like, is that animal abuse? <laughs> and then they have an expert weigh in. Should ponies drink beer? And the vet says no. But I, oh wait, no, it actually says it's fine in moderation. Beer is not particularly bad for a pony. It's not unheard of for vets to administer Guinness to horses recovering from grass sickness. Okay, so I guess, I, I sorry guys, I'm not a horse owner. I didn't know you're allowed to get your horses drunk. Sorry, I'm not up to date on horse. Rules. Flipping through FHM, it, it has a very stark contrast to Esquire. This gives more Playboy energy. Then again, I've never actually flipped through a Playboy, but it's what I assume Playboy would be like. Like there's some actual nudity in this. So that's that might explain the smells that I'm smelling while flipping through this. I'm gonna wash my hands after this, it's fine. Can I get pregnant from this? I just realized that when I was growing up, since I had so many sisters and just, I was around a lot of females, I feel like I kind of also inherited a fear of getting pregnant. Like I remember hearing, did you know you can get pregnant from a hotel hot tub? And I was like, oh my gosh, like anyway, what if I got pregnant from this magazine because of somebody's fluids? What if, you know? <laughs> Is that Leonardo DiCaprio? In the humor section, they have a little blurb out of the mouths of babes. Basically, it's just a bunch of stories of females doing stupid stuff. <laughs> Let's get into it. During a dispute with my mate, about who was taller, my girlfriend made us stand back to back. When she declared that my mate was taller, I protested. Come and have a look for yourself, she told me calmly. <laughs> Like she thought he could turn back and see them. Oh, silly woman. Watching football on the telly, a player was taking a throw in. What's the thing on his back? Asked my girlfriend. Is it a backwards E? It was, of course, the number three. She's currently at the University of Newcastle st studying mathematics. What? What are women doing? On holiday, during dinner, a girl at my table pointed out that it felt like we were moving. We were on a cruise ship. <gasps> Women say the darnest things. That should be a whole series on Netflix. The joke section continues. This is where readers can submit jokes. Um, most of them are about like boobs and stuff. A woman is standing naked in front of the bedroom mirror. I look horrible, she moans to her husband. I'm fat, I'm ugly, my boobs are saggy, my backside's huge, I feel awful. Her husband looks over. Don't be so hard on yourself, darling. He says trying to cheer her up. At least your eyesight's still spot on. But there's also some just family friendly jokes that anyone can enjoy, such as this short one. Question, how do you make a tissue dance? Answer, put a little boogie in it. <laughs> like that one just anyone could enjoy, you know? That's not misogynistic. That's just humor. Good old humor. I love humor. I love com comedy. 
in search of the sexiest university in England. I guess Royal Holloway got the vote for the sexiest college in the country in 2000 and what was this? 2003. All right. I guess at that college they had a lingerie catwalk show. So obviously they won. Did any of you guys go there that year? Was it super sexy? No, I just feel like a creep. Like I'm asking you if your college experience was sexy. Like, ooh. Anyway, the FHM Man Taco Meter. This basically is an entire guide on how to speak to different people, such as a teenage boy, old men, your girlfriend's dad, any gay man. Like they have a whole guide on what you should say to gay men. To a gay man, this is what you should say. Where did you get that shirt? It's really hard to find decent going out, clobber. Also, it says men never say smoothie. Okay, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Crap. I say smoothie a lot. Whenever people ever ask like, what do you have for breakfast? I always say a smoothie because that's what I have. Wait, men also never say moisturize? Crap. Men never say snuggle. Oh my God. Uh, I've been doing everything wrong. Topics to avoid with gay men. Sexually transmitted diseases. No. <laughs> Oh, that's true, because every gay guy has a bunch. So I don't want to bring up a sore subject. I get it. I wonder if there's anyone out there who took this so seriously. Like the FHM man taco meter ruled their entire existence. I can't show you any of this, but there's an entire article about the 50 greatest female nude scenes in popular movies. Hollywood nude. Wait, Jamie Lee Curtis has gone nude in a movie? The mom from Freaky Friday got freaky. Okay, adding that to my movie list. After that, they then have kind of a shame list that is the no-show crew. These are female stars who refuse to go nude on camera. Boring! It literally says, curse them. They will not disrobe for us. Towards the very back of the magazine, there's a little sneaky gay <gasps> phone line ad. So like they kind of knew like some people are in the closet buying this or they might be a little bit bi-curious. There's a little tiny ad you maybe would miss if your eyes aren't, you know, sexually inclined to a men's pecs. The gay zone. I picture so many sexually confused men back in 2003 seeing that gay talk line and being curious, but calling as a joke. Hey, is this the gay talk line? <laughs> And then like slowly, like throughout the joke phone call, they're like actually turned on. And But then they're like, I'm turned on as a joke. It's all a joke. Frick. <laughs> After being on the more vulgar side of things with FHM, we're returning to the classy side of Lad Mags with GQ. This has Jennifer Lopez on it. JLo, the people's queen. Much like Esquire, GQ is known for its sophisticated upper echelon takes on politics, fashion, grooming tips. It kind of has like a pretentious vibe. I've actually purchased GQ magazine, not for a video, in my teen years. Remember, you know whenever you go to the airport back then, like at least for me, like I would always get a handful of magazines to read on the plane. But GQ is always one I would add into my little bag. This is the December 2002 issue. Jennifer Lopez, more proof that God is a man. I was excited when I read that because I thought there was gonna be a serious editorial piece by a researcher, like going in depth being like, God is a man. He wasn't a woman. Like just like men invented camel toes, like men were God, not a woman. But no, it actually, what they're saying is like, God is a man because like he created Jennifer Lopez. You know what I mean? So that's why he made her so hot. Maybe you guys got that right away and I'm the dumbass. But I actually had to ask ChatGBT. You know what? Thank God for ChatGPT. I'd be I'd be left in the dark on a lot of things. <sighs> Here's an entire article titled, I'm dating a lesbian. It's an entire thought piece about his experience dating a former lesbian as he refers to her. Um, he says he was very thrown off when he found out she had only dated women before him. Besides once out, does one really want to go back in? And if she mostly likes girls, what did that say about me? Did that make me kind of gay? No, that doesn't make you kind of gay, but this entire spread you did accompanying the article kind of does make you gay. Like just, just a little, like I'm like we love, but like it's a little gay, like in the best way possible. Oh, those censors, two decades goes by and they're just as strong as ever. There's a whole page on 25 signs she may have the upper hand. <laughs> we can't have the woman having the upper hand. I picture guys in 2002 being like, crap, does she have the upper hand in the relationship? I gotta read these. <laughs> Number one sign she may have the upper hand. You realize you haven't eaten a hot dog in almost a year. Wait, did girlfriends not let their men eat hot dogs? I didn't know that was a thing, but I'd be pissed if my chick didn't let me. Another sign, you're on the pill, not her. She talks you into buying a man bag. Oh, she doesn't shave anymore. When she tells you she doesn't feel like it tonight, it's no big deal because neither do you. 
I'm confused. There's an entire list of what was super overrated in 2002. SpongeBob SquarePants is number 15 and it's in bold. Like only two other things on the, in the list are on bo in bold. Like how is SpongeBob SquarePants overrated? Gosh. Shut up! Finally, we've gotten to the point of the video where we can look through some vintage Maxim magazines. The crown jewel of the lad space. Just look at Megan Fox in 2008. I had a poster of Megan Fox in my room in 2008. People thought it was me pretending to be straight. I, to this day, still think she is so cool. Like, I want posters of her on my wall today. So Maxim kind of is right in the middle of the prestigious Esquire and GQ lad mags and the super vulgar FHM type magazines. You know, it's it has some risque photos, but it also isn't so over the top that you couldn't read it on a plane. It doesn't show any actual nudity, I don't think. Maxim has faced numerous controversies, much like FHM magazine for offensive humor, misogynistic takes. This issue from 2007 features Erica Derange, TV's sexiest woman. She's apparently from Smallville. I never watched that, so I'm not familiar with her work. Maxim interviewed women much the same way as these other magazines. They always have to talk about how they're unclothed in some way. Like here she says, I'm not a nudist, but when you're home with the blinds drawn, it's okay to run around in the buff. In Ava Mendez's issue, her quote is, I clean in the flesh and I guard and naked. Like, I just don't believe it. But go them for giving these guys the fantasy. Like, they're like, whatever. Like, I'll, I guess I'll pretend I garden naked, even though why would I do that? Like, I don't even garden my own house. Like, Ava Mendez isn't cleaning her house. If I was being interviewed, I'd be like, yeah, I shower naked. When I take a shit, I have my pants down. That'd be my quote. There's a whole blurb, how do I survive being kidnapped? And like, it's like everyone's worst fear is being kidnapped. We as a society, we're all just scared of being kidnapped. Even when we're adults, like I know there's 50 year olds walking around being like, I'm gonna get kidnapped if I go to the store alone. Like it's just the way we were all raised. The who's hot right now section says, Nicole Scherzinger, the pussycat doll is, is who's hot. Who She's who's hot right now. Love. How to fight like a man. All the guys who read this, like you aren't even getting in fights. Like, if a bar fight breaks out, you're out the door crying. You don't fight. Fight me. Kidding, I've never been in a fight either. I don't plan on it. I am gonna try the outside leg kick if anyone tries it though. So watch out. Wait, Lauren Conrad's in this? Okay, Lauren. What was the biggest shock to you when you moved to LA, Lauren Conrad? I love it here, but almost everyone does coke. I mean, true. There's also features of just random women who aren't celebrities, but they're they're hot. And this hot woman says, I totally know how to use a gun. I grew up on 40 acres with no TV. My friends were into shooting and riding motorcycles through other people's property. So people probably submitted photos of themselves and like could have the chance to be featured, you know? A 23 year old girl from Los Angeles says, lots of girls are bitchy to their boyfriends, but not me. I'm always in a good mood. When I was young, I preferred to be in control in a relationship, but now I like it better when the man takes charge. You tell him, Agnes. That's the way it should be. Just kidding. More lesbian panic. My fiance used to shag girls. Is she a lesbian? I thought straight guys, especially in 2007, like they wanted their girlfriends to be lesbians. Like this is a problem now? Uh, they have an expert answering the question and the advice is very questionable. Ask her if it was just an experiment because then she's not gay. If she says she's confused, She's really telling you she's bi. And you can say bye bye to your relationship. A truly bisexual woman will make a choice one way or the other. And if she doesn't tell the truth, then you're engaged to a liar. Like what? I'm sorry to all the bi kings and queens out there. Like you guys don't have to pick a side. Live your bi life, you know? Like it doesn't even make sense. Like gay guys are attracted to men. So like once they're married to a man, like there's there still might be attracted to all these other men. Like, so if you're bi, like you might still be attracted to the, but like, it, I don't get it. Hayden Pantaneer, your favorite hero is finally 18. Gentlemen, start your oogling. <gasps> I'm, I'm looking through the Megan Fox issue and they don't even interview her. Like what the hell? There's photos, but I want to see the interview. I want to see her quote about what she does naked. And they robbed me of that. What? Okay, before I close this Maxa magazine, let me read you some jokes from their humor section. What do old ladies taste like? Depends. Um, a bear walks into a bar and says to the bartender, I would like a Jack and 
a Coke. Why the big paws? To which the bear replies, I've had them all my life. <laughs> but he paused before he said it and Coke. Well, I'm glad I looked at all these magazines from the early 2000s. I feel like I have transformed into a better man because of this. I'm not dating a lesbian, I'll tell you that much. No, this was interesting. It is kind of sad that magazines are just done. Like I saw a tweet the other day being like, are you telling me I can't work at a magazine? Cause like when we grew up every single movie, like people were working at magazines and it seemed all glamorous. Like I'm 13 going on 30 and the devil wears Prada, but like you can't even do that now. Like what do I have to work at Buzzfeed? That's not even a thing anymore. Where am I gonna work. Jubilee? <sighs> Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like, and comment below what you think of these men's mags, anything I should have added, and what I should research and look into next time. Bye!